previously on Restoration, we found out a little more about the explosion at AppTap headquarters, and signs are pointing to an inside job. The team is tasked with uncovering the mole and discovers an alarming letter. So you all are headed back to Aptep HQ. Nothing really exciting happens on the way. Uh, it's a pretty quiet night in the city. Aptap is one of those places that kind of runs 24-7 because they're made up of so many different races that there's always somebody working and there's always portals appearing. So you might as well have somebody keeping an eye out for that. So you guys get back to headquarters. Um, I'm going to assume we drop Gwen off on the way at his dorm because he's a tiny baby. I'm very yeah. sleepy. I don't stay up this late. <laughs> he's a tiny well. baby. He needs to sleep. He's a growing boy. Yeah. Yep. I mean, v-, v would definitely have walked back with you, but it- this is probably one of those nights that he's just going to stay over at AppTap rather than going home because it really doesn't make sense to walk back and forth across the city. I'm sure protocol dictates that like, He's supposed to escort Serathiel all the way back to his room. But yeah. it's three o'clock in the morning and Serathiel's like, Vinan, you can just go home. I know the way back to my room. Mm. It's three o'clock in the morning. Go home. Fine. We will talk. I, I promise. Yeah. He does not look particularly hopeful about it. All right. Good night. Good night. And he uh, starts off until... Until <laughs> Chaz is like, oh good, is he gone? <laughs> uh, Serathiel had just been about to leave. He says, y- yes, what? Yes, he's gone. Great. Uh, how's your armor? How you doing, buddy? He stares at Chaz in just abject confusion. Says, Fine. What is, what's this about? So earlier you read a letter out loud. Do you remember that? Yes, he says a little bit defensively. (laughs) Right, that's not something you normally do read or understand letters? I... uh, I can read, he says, a little bit more defensively. Right. It's... And he's rubbing at the the little bandage that Viernan left behind. He's like, okay, fine, fine. Yes, you can read. My apologies. It's just, I don't think I've ever heard you read aloud or be interested in letters? Uh, Serathiel, like, there's like a a really anguished look on his face. Like, clearly he is also very curious about what's happening, but he doesn't, like, his int is still at eight. Like, he doesn't have the faculties necessary to verbalize Mm. why it bothers him or, like, what he can do about it. So he just sort of stands there rubbing at the bandage. Yep, and Chaz definitely picks up on that. Also, that, that, you've been doing that all day. It's new armor, it chafes. Well, let's have a look at it then. I'm good at armor, that's what I do. Uh, and then I feel like before he can even like formulate a response, he's like pulled out by the <laughs> right. rest. Yeah, he's like, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> to the laboratory! Uh, Serathiel is sort of pulled away. And as soon as they get into the laboratory, so Serathiel has been here before. Like, this sort of thing has happened to him before. People have, like, pulled him aside into dark rooms. And, like, as soon as Chasimir closes the door, he's like, Chasimir, I'm not going to have sex with you. <laughs> Chaz just stares at him like, oh, oh, gods, no. Not not in my lab. N- never. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that, in you- my laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, that's so unsanitary. No, you completely misunderstood. We are here to examine your armor, not... 
examine you like that, oh lord. He says, the armor is fine. It just fits a little strange. It happens every time they give me new armor. He's, he says, Chesmin, do you know anything about and he sort of hesitates. He like looks back at the door and then somewhat reluctantly, he does like unclip the first parts of his chest piece and like pulls it aside. And has I don't think Chasimir has ever seen the full mark. I don't think so. No, yet. But he's just he's seen the top of it because, you know, his neck is just visible with his armor mm. usually. Uh, but it stretches like all the way down his like in the entire left pectoral muscle is like cut, dominated by the silver white tattoo. And he says, do you know anything about this? Hmm. He's like looking at it intently. I feel like, DM, I should make a roll for this. Yeah. What do I know about this Marky Mark? Yeah, Arcana roll. Uh, you know pretty much nothing about it, which is not surprising given how tightly Aptap controls uh, information about Serathiel. Um, you know that it's a rune, obviously. Yeah, mm, yeah. You know, it's some kind of suppression uh, mark, but this, the details of exactly what it does, no. After Chaz studies it, he's like, hmm, no, runes are not really my expertise. All I really know is that it suppresses something. Sorry, I don't have anything more substantial than that. Yeah, Serathiel definitely looks a little disheartened. Like, he's definitely not smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the wind just kind of gets knocked out of his sails. He says, oh, suppose that's to be expected. Well, I mean, I mean, there's a bright side, right? At least I got to see you shirtless, right? It's Serathiel. Oh, God, like, this shit happens to him all the time. And he does not have the he doesn't have the words to verbalize why it bothers him. But like, clearly, it bothers him. Like, as soon as as soon as Chasmir makes a pass at him, Serathiel like takes a step back. And he's like, genuinely offended. And he's like, angry, too. He says, what the hell is the I came to you for help, Chasimir. Why? And he furiously starts pulling his armor back on. He says, I need to train myself out of this. I need to stop expecting people to help me, expect people to care. And then he storms out and he slams the lab door behind him. Which definitely leaves Chaz sputtering. He's just like, what? But, oh, oh dear. Gwen, when you wake up the next day, do you head right back over to AppTap or do you wander around campus a bit first, checking on anything? I don't think he's got too much else going on with his life, you know what I mean? So, like, this is the most exciting thing he's got going for him. <laughs> do you at least grab breakfast? Yeah. Okay. Who doesn't grab? I like breakfast. <laughs> Everyone likes breakfast. All right. So you've got an opportunity to hear some more rumors. Excellent. So when you were in the market the other day, you heard rumors about new warlocks. And, you know, you've heard a couple more rumblings about it, but nothing specific. One thing that's new is you're starting to hear rumors around the campus of some clerics losing their powers. Hmm. Like, completely losing their powers. Well, that sounds familiar. (laughs) I know. It sure does. Is it because they were being bad at their religion? Because I feel like that's probably a legitimate reason. (laughs) Is it because their patron went crazy? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I feel like if if I'm having a conversation with some like fellow student, that's what I'm like. Yeah, but come on, man. Like maybe they're just like bad at being clerics. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. Like it, clerics and paladins can lose their powers. Yeah, if, uh, if they like betray their principles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like just one or two of them. It's like the the entire church of Labellus and Laroth. They they lost their powers. They're, what if it's the spell plague again? Or, or you know, like, the time of troubles? Oh my god, Gwen, roll an arcana check, you dunce. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Do I have to roll an yeah. arcana? Okay, I will. Oh! Yep! Yes! Yep! <laughs> yep! <laughs> wow. yep. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know anything. I've forgotten where I am. Alright, so in character, <laughs> react to the term spell plague. Spell plague? What's it? What, we didn't. We don't have those where we're from. What? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? We're a very pious city. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where you heathens come from. How do you not know about the time of trouble? The, the gods literally were forced to walk the earth in their ab. And the the guy just like leaves in disgust because like, oh my <laughs> god, you're dumb. 
I just stare confused at his back. Like I don't. I've I've never heard of this. Not <laughs> once. Never. Never in my life. Oh, that's so fun. I feel like he's he's curious though. So he like stockpiles that information away in his brain, and he's like, make note. Ask people about spell plagues. <laughs> like, what is this, and why important? It is so. It would be like walking around asking, "Hey, do you guys know what World War Two is?" <laughs> like, that is the equivalent. It'd be like basically. <laughs> Okay, y'all, I didn't make me roll a nat one. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Lol. All right. Uh, so after you grab your coffee and your breakfast and have a very confusing and upsetting conversation about history that you don't remember that being on any of your history courses ever. <laughs> any of my tests. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so you get your coffee, you get your bagel, uh, you head over to AppTap and you have- Oatmeal. Huh? I get my oatmeal. oatmeal. I get my oatmeal. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you get over to AppTap and you find the others. It's not particularly hard because Viernan told you where to meet. They call it like a library, but it's really more appropriately a file room. And it's one of the auxiliary file rooms. Like most of the files at AppTap are kept in triplicate. So, God. Sorry, I work in the I work for the government, and that just like oh God, I feel like I just punched in the head. <laughs> of course, <laughs> like, no triplicate copies. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are multiple file rooms. Some of them are in like the actual physical building, and some of them are in the uh, auxiliary buildings. So they're like in that weird, not quite in this plane, but not out of it state. Uh, so some of them are more protected than others. Uh, I should mention that uh, Serathiel has a. Uh, like you, like I don't know what you were expecting, Chasmir, but he does not. He's not glaring at you or anything. Uh, he's just back to neutral. It seems right, which is of course very unsettling for Chaz. Just like cool, great. Also, that means I don't have to think about it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's the lesson you should take. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, just like a real man. You're doing such a good job, Kay. <laughs> uh, so I guess we're gonna divide up work and look. To find that address in the uh, personnel files. Woohoo! Mm. I Woo-hoo. am extremely gung ho about this. Oh, God, of course you are. <laughs> Sorting through paperwork. <laughs> All right. I'm He's so like, fucking Woo-hoo. delighted. It's research. There's a difference. Yeah, exactly. This is my dream come true. Are you kidding? Oh, boy. <laughs> So I feel like he takes his share of work without complaint, but he's definitely moving at a slower pace because I assume by now he's back to uh, into level six, which means reading is hard for him. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's fair. Yeah, so you guys, you've got an address. It's going to take you longer that way because usually you're looking for things based on a name, not an address. Um, but you've got the work divided up. Uh, I guess everybody roll me a investigation check. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, no. Are you sure? Oh, no. You're not expecting much from Serapio. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you insist. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you got a 20. Cute. Of course, Gwenna got a 20. <laughs> yeah, right, of course. <laughs> just, to, just to let our listeners at home know, Tessa rolled an 18 with a minus two modifier. So she still got right. a 16. <laughs> you still got better than Chaz, <laughs> which, oh, is which is upsetting. <laughs> This is like Chaz's kryptonite, I'm pretty sure. Sorting through paperwork? Ugh. I have, like, elaborate, like, organization charts. Like, I have I have a system. I've staked out, like, two <laughs> whole tables. and. So I think the way that I'm going to play this, because I don't want to just ignore the dice uh, in that case, um, I think, Serathiel, you at least find the group that they're in, but you're having so much... Some of those numbers are moving around. Some of the addresses are a little harder to read so you kind of give some of those to Gwen <laughs> he's like hands him a stack of papers like check this one I think it's I don't know just check it excellent <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> can't believe they're paying me for this <laughs> <laughs> do this at home for free <laughs> so Gwen it's you you notice immediately it's been mixed up with a different file uh, so like two files are stuffed together to try to obscure one of them and so you find this one automatically. You're like, yes, this is the one. I think it's the one. I, I look at it and I'm like, clever girl. <laughs> and I pull it out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And Chaz just like immediately like leans over your shoulder like, ooh, what'd you find? Someone was trying to obscure this file or they're very bad at filing. It's often very hard to tell. 
<laughs> Could be a little bit of both. Yeah, I have my very serious face on. My glasses are like riding down my nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I, I, I pull it out and look at it. What do I see? All right. Uh, the name you find is Alaric Drake. Interesting. Mm. And uh, he is a Aptap field, field agent, and he's been with the organization for about three centuries. So he's, so he's probably an elf. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's longer than Serathiel's been here, and he's been here his whole life. Yep. So. I like, I'm looking at that, and I'm like mind-boggled. Like, what? how... How has he been here for- that? this must be a typo. Oh no, you're just only half elf. That's perfectly normal. 300! I just like look at Chess and I'm like, that's, that's a long time. So I feel says, I've been here for 264 years. Right, he, like Chess just like looks like, how long do you think el- full elves live? I mean, I, I feel like I know that. Like I know that full elves live <laughs> yeah. like a long time, because my, dad, my dad's a full elf, but- it's a long time at one freaking job. <laughs> <laughs> Not for an elf. <laughs> yeah, maybe for you. <laughs> I just like look at like between the two of you and I'm just like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do we know about <laughs> Aloric? Alaric. Well, uh, that house is a relatively new address. Uh, what you found was a change of address form. Relatively new for an elf. You know, it looks like it's dated about when uh, Aptap moved into Silvery Moon. Hmm. It's a, just just to check, because it is important about the mole or not, the file was misfiled, right? It wasn't where it was supposed to be. As far as you can tell, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, like, shaking my head at the, like, this is a true injustice. I don't know who they let <laughs> file these things, but I'm honestly, they offended. need to re-examine their <laughs> protocols, because obviously their quality is just not up to par, and I just, like, huff and put the file down. Chaz just sort of laughs, like, oh, oh, you remind me so much of someone. It's hilarious. So it sounds like he's already skipped town. Ta- this is not in character, by the way. Uh, it sounds like he's probably already skipped town. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So the question becomes, how do we find this guy? Right. Or else, how do we find some trail? We need to locate the administrator first, right? Because we need to know more about this person that's in this file. So you've got a couple options. You can go to the administrant with what you found so far. You can see if you can get more of his personnel file. Like, this is, this is clearly just the high-level stuff, but it doesn't really talk about any of the cases he's been on. So that might give you clues as to where he might go. Okay, that's actually that's what I would do first. No, like with me. So <laughs> I feel like I feel like I've already like I've already like digging through the files trying to find his personnel file. Um, I think Viernan is going to suggest that hey, maybe we get one of the archivists involved in this, and maybe they can help us look specifically for his file while others put away all the rest of this stuff. <laughs> and let them steal all of Gwen's fun? Yeah, exactly. This is what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <laughs> you do it your way. Like, how very dare. <laughs> okay, I will go get a tea, I guess. <laughs> all right, uh, so I guess, Gwen, roll me another investigation check. Shit. <laughs> to see how long it takes you to find it. <laughs> yeah, 16's pretty good. It wasn't a very high DC. Um, so <laughs> who knows whose method would have gone better, whether, you know, letting somebody <laughs> take care of all of the other extraneous files might have helped go the, a little faster, or if your way was better, because you have a system. You do, you do find the case files. Um, and so it's got a list of all of the reports that he's submitted and links to addendums and different files that would tell you more about those locations and uh, cases. And it looks like he's closed he's closed about three portals in the last month or so. So that might be a place to start. Do we know where? You know that there is one, uh, there was one over by the ladies' college, but I mean, that's, Gwen, that's where you go to school, so you know there's not a portal around there right now. Um, And there is one in the Silver Glen, and there is one near the Golden Oak Tavern. In Both of those are in the North Bank. And these are the ones that he already closed, right? Yep. Allegedly. Right. Allegedly. Okay. I feel like Chaz would want to, like, get more info on, on the man himself, right? How just real quick, 
maybe maybe I don't know this, but like how subtle like we weren't super subtle about closing the portal. Like is is it usually like a big fucking deal where like everyone's gonna be like, Oh, I fucking know they did that <laughs> or is it the kind of thing where it's just like they sneak in in like the middle of the night and like, oh, was there even a portal there? Who knew? Uh depends. So the portals vary in size and in intensity. Um they vary when they appear. Um, some of them appear in the middle of the night, and it's entirely conceivable that team might go out in the middle of the night and nobody even knows that the portal appeared. So we could show up and be like, was there a portal here? And people might just be like, I don't fucking know my dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. You guys have been here forever. Have you n- you never heard of this dude? Right, exactly. So here, here's what, the, what Chaz is going to do. He's going to slide up to some some librarian and be like, oh. I can't believe that Alaric hasn't called me back. I mean, I'm hot, right? Please tell me you think I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think I've had this pickup line on me. <laughs> it's like, what? what? Was it something I did? Oh, <laughs> My parents just like, dude, what? Jazz, come on. Why would you be going after him? Why not? If they're available, right? You do flirt with everybody, I guess. But like, you were serious about that? I'm just... It, you know, it's just when they get away, and I just, I haven't heard from him. I'm a little worried, that's all. I, I don't know. I, I mean, he wasn't, he never came down here usually, other than dropping off his files, but that would usually be done just handing him off to an intern. Sloppy with his paperwork. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, that's not the only thing he was sloppy with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're just, you're just spreading rumors about this guy. This guy fucking sucks in bed. <laughs> His BJs are the worst. Uh, <laughs> Everyone should know about it. <laughs> I love the librarian just gives you like this kind of horrified look and goes back to their filing. All right, it's just Chaz being Chaz. <laughs> so other than that, no, nah, you don't know very much. Uh, at least this guy doesn't know very much. So he was a field agent. You might have better luck, like, talking to some handlers or talking to the administrant at this point. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget, I also want to talk to her, too. Uh, what a coincidence, because Serapiel definitely does not oh, want to talk to him. <laughs> like, as, as soon as, as, soon as Chasmir starts talking, he's like, oh, I don't know, maybe we should talk to the administrant. Serapiel's like, can I go anywhere else and do any, anything else? Anywhere. We have to talk to her eventually, because we have to report what we found, right? Right, and can I can I be elsewhere for that? Uh, if if you really want, um, you could go see if Taina's available in the train, I guess. Great, and then he stands up and leaves. <laughs> Chaz just sort of cool. raises an eyebrow at that, like, oh, right? He's just not comfortable around her. Interesting. Can't imagine why. She's so nice. And smart and basically incredible. Uh, okay, so it sounds like Chaz and Gwen and Viernin are the ones that are going to go report. Unless Gwen, are you staying to organize this case? Right, <laughs> recreationally, just to find. Uh, oh god! You know what? If if y'all will let me, definitely. So like, unless somebody is going to like make me come with Someone you, drag him away. Please don't let him do this to himself. Right. Chaz is like, oh no, oh no. There's only one of us can get out of it, and he's already gone. So come, you're coming with. Uh, but do you see all of the files? They I have do. to go back in their place, Chaz. You're the one who found the file. I mean, don't you want to impress her? I mean, she does seem cool, but can't I impress her after I organize all of the paperwork? I say, looking longingly back at the tables. How's this? You can organize the paperwork after we make our report. There we go. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys head over to the administrant's office, and she's gotten it much, much neater again. It didn't take her very long because they cataloged it very quickly in time. What is time in an agency where you literally manipulate time? You don't feel bad about going in and potentially taking a chair. Oh, uh, come in. Come in. Have you have you found something then? Oh, yes. Why don't you tell her all about it, Gwen? I look horrified. <laughs> she turns to you just I just clap you on the back like, yeah, you could do it. And uh, I, f- I found uh, the, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I look helplessly at Chad, like, please. The file? You found the file? 
the file. I found a file. Would you like to see my book about filing? No, not that book. No. <laughs> not, um, uh, not, not right now. Okay, but later, Ray Baby. What was this file about? Um. <laughs> Fear name steps in. Okay. <laughs> so, um, we found a file that, let's back up even further than the file. We've traced the uh, stolen files to a house, and uh, it turned out to be the house of Alaric Drake. Does that name ring any bells? And she pauses, and I mean, he was one of our field agents, but you think he was involved? Well, considering the state we found things in, burned files seemed like a hasty retreat. Goodness. I suppose we should check out some of his most recent cases, see if maybe he fled through one of them, but if he still had his manipulator, he'd theoretically be able to go anywhere. Oh, that's comforting. Because I feel like we should just like show her the letter so she can see all the information we have. Okay, so Virnan pulls out everything that he had, the file cover and the envelope, and uh, she takes her time to read the letter and is concerned as well. This symbol, this isn't good either. Um, and she pulls out another file that's in progress uh, and mentions that, well, the um, you'd heard rumors in the market about a new sect of warlocks. You mentioned that in your report, Viernan. And we think this is the symbol that they're using. It's cropped up a few times around the city and now here. It's a very distinctive symbol, I agree. Well, I suppose we could at least try looking for his old cases, see if maybe there's one that he left open for some reason. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> More <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> All right. Yeah. More research. <laughs> hey, Gwen, you've already found his three most recent. You don't need to do more research. You could have told her this. I think that dawns on me, and I'm like, oh, no. Well, I mean, I'd love to do more research if you give me some time, but we did actually find his last couple portals. Oh, really? Where where were they? Uh, let's see. One was by the Ladies' College, then the Silver Glen, and then I think the Golden Oak Tavern. Chaz gives thumbs up, like, yeah, you did a speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's likely not the college, because somebody would have noticed there's always some college student up late. Not you, of course. I know, Gwyneth. You're, you're a good student. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Silver Glen would be unlikely as well. The Temple of Sylvanus is there, so that wouldn't be easy to get around. Chaz looks immediately uncomfortable at the mention of that name. I suppose maybe at the Golden Oak, though it seems it's odd that nobody would notice if it remained open or if it had been opened again. We've only had the one report. It is a tavern. People generally get pretty pissed there. Pass out drunk? It sounds like we should go check it out. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, it would be helpful. So quest, investigate the tavern. Gotcha. I guess my question is, Chaz, did you want to talk to the administrant now or do you want to come back? I think now is the time. He's like, oh, yes, you have lots to go research. Go. Goodbye, Gwen. I'll meet you at the wherever. <laughs> what do you, to, to, I don't, to, but where? To, what do you mean meet you at the wherever? Aren't you going to come with me? <laughs> I've never been to that side of town. You have to research it and then I will, I will be there. I promise. Oh, yeah. Well, I do have to research it. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay, bye now. You could have just said you wanted to talk to her before the rest of us headed out. It would have been much less suspicious. Now Viernan's just like really fucking curious what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he just stares at Viernan. He's like, well? Well, what? Are you going to leave or not? I have important business. Oh my god, fine. I'll go check on Strathiel. Yes, go just check on the boy. Thank you. Goodbye. Anyway, you've got her attention now. <laughs> he just turns back and he's like, sorry about the display there. It's just... Well, it's fresh on my mind. I needed to talk to you. What about? Here, um, can I get you any tea or anything? Oh, yes, tea. That would be lovely. Thank you. She rings for the aid to get some. <laughs> Chaz is sort of like 
pacing back and forth, like trying to organize his thoughts. Like, well, actually, the one who found that letter was Sarathiel, and he read it out loud. I didn't know he hmm. could read it. Uh, I mean, he seemed to have no trouble. It was. He's perfectly capable of reading, but no effort. Right. And like, without even acknowledging that she's still talking, he's like, also, oh, there is the matter that he has no locks on his doors. That. She doesn't really acknowledge it. Just like, yeah. Right. And he's like, also that rune, I don't know anything about it, but I mean, it suppresses something, but surely he's not a danger to himself, right? Jasmere, what, what's going on in your head? He sort of looks up at her, like, he's almost like frantic now, like, I am just worried. That's all. Worried about what? I mean, he's been here for a while, and I know there are certain measures to keep him safe, but some of them feel a bit extreme, maybe? What are you expecting me to say? I don't know what I'm expecting you to say, really. I just don't really understand, and that's frustrating. I don't like not understanding something. That's a bad habit of artificers, I know, but <laughs> right. you have to just trust us, Chaz. Yeah, at that, I feel like he's like stops pacing and just like looks at it and he's like, right, of course, of course, there's no reason for me to be worried. Of course, you have it all well underhand. Sorry for taking up your time. You remember our motto, of course. Of course, I do. How could I forget? Are you all right then? I, uh, I have another meeting coming up. Ah, yes. And I will grab that tea from the aide so she is not wasting her steps. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and he just, like, immediately leaves. So Viernan goes down to find Serathiel, uh, who, it sounded like, went to train. Yes. So, uh, what are you, what are you training at? What are you doing? Um, is, who, what's the name of his, um, it's his, it's, I know it's Viernan's yeah, sister. Yeah, it's Viernan's twin, uh, and her name is Taina. Taina, yes. Uh, and Taina is the one who's a little bit thirsty and sort of not apologetic about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, he, he is stupid enough where she's like, oh, well, so long as you're here, you might as well do some, like, you know, some hard calisthenics. Now, might as well just take your shirt off. Right. Do some uh, lunges. Because you're going to sweat. You don't want to ruin your clothes, right? And Sarah's like, okay, because it's into six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he has got his shirt off and he is doing uh, some drills with his two-handed sword. Okay. Well, uh, I guess then Viernan heads down and he notices the crowd that has gathered yeah, as a always, result. there's always a crowd. Mm-hmm. And he just kind of shoves his way through the crowd, just like, come on, don't you have anything better to do? Get back to work. Uh, the people grumble and grumble and just kind of like, uh, fine, whatever. Yeah, and he elbows his way over to his twin. Uh, just like, really? Really? Shirtless drills first thing in the day? I mean, why not? <sighs> You're so gross. Serathiel! Uh, he stops, he turns, uh, he's, you know, shaking off the, uh, adrenaline of working as hard as he does uh, for such a short amount of time, he says. Ah, uh, well, again, Vannon, you done with your thing? For now. Good. Uh, he comes over, takes a uh, swig from a, a water pitcher. Yeah. I feel like Vannon just automatically hands him a towel to dry off with. And just have it. He nods appreciatively. Um, I think we have a little bit of time. Did you still want to talk? About what? The questions you had yesterday? I don't remember what that what? Hmm. Um how's your how's your neck doing? Oh, fine. Uh he pulls away the uh gauze because he's used to getting checked up on medically all the time. He pulls aside the gauze, it's already healed. Hmm. It was it was just a minor wound. It was like a chafe. Yeah. So it like it healed while he was trancing over like the course of four hours. Yeah. Yeah, between the, the magical healing and yeah, just being an elf. Mm. 
Ah, um, it's... You, you don't remember anything that you asked yesterday? I don't usually. Hmm. All right. Um, I think he's probably just going to, like, send his twin away because, like, clearly we're, we're done with training for right now. And I guess while well, Serathi will just grab some of his stuff and, you know, like, starts pulling his shirt back on and things, uh, Viernan asks, Serathi will... Are you happy? Uh, the question kind of takes him off guard. He, as he's pulling his shirt over his head, he sort of looks back over one shoulder and says, What do you mean? Are you happy here? Li- living here? Being part of Aptap? Are, are you happy? He stares for a long time at Viernan like he doesn't quite understand the premise of the question. And after... A protracted silence, he says, I... I don't know. What does it feel like to be happy? And Viernan feels that like a punch to the gut. Uh, because before this, he never realized that, you know, Serathia would talk about not being allowed to do things, or not being able to do this, or to go out, or whatever. But he hadn't realized that he was actually so unhappy that he doesn't know what happiness is. He doesn't know what that is. And that's kind of horrifying. Like, Viernan wasn't around for most of Serathiel's life. He doesn't know how he was raised, but it doesn't take a genius to put two and two together, knowing what he does know. And it pisses him off. And I think that is when he decides that his conversation with Oriana is going to go a little differently. Virnan barely waits for the assistant to announce him before storming into Administrant Oriana's office. Pulling out a folded piece of paper from his pocket, he reads... Dr. Palanti is being reassigned. Dr. Dwyer will take over. And until he has demonstrated that he can keep a neutral opinion of the matter, he will not be shown any of these documents. He tosses the page from Serathiel's file onto the desk. What else have you been hiding from me? I've never questioned the fact that parts of his file are confidential. Viernan is too agitated to sit down pacing and hovering behind one of the chairs as words he's bitten back for years come spilling out. I've spouted your company lines about how this is all for his protection, but I need more information if you expect me to keep lying to him. None of this is for him. What's Aptap's real motivation here? The administrant looks up from the page to Viernan's furious face, her demeanor calm as always. This organization has done what it needed to in order to keep Toril safe. You are so eager to see the destruction he's capable of? So be it. Unlocking a file cabinet, she pulls out a huge folder, searching through it for the appropriate pages. Two hundred dead when he murdered his own father and everyone else in the Pendaren estate. She pulls out another page, ignoring the way Viernan flinches. Millions dead after he absorbs Bane and becomes the God Eater. Viernan's knuckles go white on the back of the chair he'd stop behind. Then there's the destruction of Raven's Bluff, Arvindor, Mount Celestia. She rests her hands on top of the file, looking up at Viernan. There were a dozen missions to thwart or stop him, costing multiple agents their lives, and every single time the timelines adjusted themselves, until we brought him here. Viernan's anger has diminished somewhat since Oriana began detailing the God Eater's crimes. He's still upset, and her revelations have only added to his list of concerns. He shakes his head, not quite able to absorb what she's told him. I've watched him, like you said. I've seen no sign he's anything other than good. He's eager to please and follows all directions without hesitation. He finally asks, what happened with Dr. Lambert? In her report, Dr. Palanti mentioned, after what we learned about him. 
Oriana calmly flips to one last portion of the file and holds out a picture. Serathiel threw a fireball at his face. It's a miracle he survived, let alone that he didn't sue. The image depicts the aftermath, and it's gruesome, showing half the man's face melted away. Even with his training, it turns Viernan's stomach. Still think he's good, Dr. Dwyer. Carefully, too aware of his own emotions, Viernan replies, I think he doesn't do anything without provocation, administrant. Agitation creeps back into his voice as he continues. We stole him away from his home, raised him in isolation, treating any developmentally expected uses of magic or emotion as evidence of evil. You expect him not to lash out? Oriana opens her mouth to say something, but Viernan cuts her off, adding, Despite all that, yes, I do still think he's good. Despite everything we've done to him, and denied him. Tell me why I should leave you as his handler, Dwyer. There's ice in her tone now, and her eyes are inscrutable. Why I shouldn't just have you reassigned, or even decommissioned as an agent. Her threat is expected. It's why he's been biting his lip for years on these questions, after all. He's too aware of the contracts and waivers he's signed since joining Aptap. Because you're running out of agents, let alone people he trusts. Viernan hopes his confident words are enough to hide his anxiety and moves toward the door. Turning back one last time, he adds, Don't worry, I'll stick to your disgusting party line. But only because it's marginally easier to explain than the reality of what you've done. You need eyes on him if what you suspect is true. Though based on what I've seen so far, you're dead wrong. Without waiting to be dismissed, he leaves before he loses his nerve. Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next, check out our Discord server for episodes in pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show, post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or on other major podcast platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.